think, you know, a lot of stuff, especially in the indie world, which all three of us are very entrenched in, like a lot of stuff revolves around like, well, how do I do ads? Like, how do I do this? Like, how do I get my book to sell more? How do I get in front of good people? But if you don't have a good book, none of that's going to matter. As writers, we like to overcomplicate everything. We like to make it more complex than it has to be. A kindergartner can tell you what a story is. It's a beginning and it's a middle and it's an end. Mastering that takes a lifetime and it's something we strive for every day. But the concept itself is not complicated. Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options, and opportunities are available to you. But navigating these requires insight. Join Mark Leslie Lefebvre as he draws upon more than a quarter century of experience as a writer, a bookseller, and a trusted book industry consultant to explore and reflect on the writing and publishing landscape to help you make informed choices on your writer journey. Hello, Reflectives, and welcome to episode 123 of the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. This is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. You know, storytelling isn't complicated. And in this episode, I have a chat with Jay Thorne and Zach Bahannon about their new book, Three Story Method, that proves that storytelling can be straightforward. Bohannon and Thorne are successful co-authors, are the minds behind The Authors on a Train, Vampires of New Orleans, Sci-Fi Seattle, Night of the Writing Dead, and Cleveland Rock Apocalypse Writing Retreats. They also launched their career author podcast in January 2018, the same week that I launched the Stark Reflections podcast. So we've been playing neck to neck weekly since then. Longtime listeners of this podcast might note that this is the third time that I've had them on this podcast. They first appeared in May 2018 on episode 21 in an episode entitled Real World Connections in a Digital World. And again, they appeared in May 10th, uh, 2019 in episode 74, and this was a panel discussion that included me, Jay, Zach, Jim Kukrell, and T.W. Piperbrook, and this was a conversation about sort of the future of digital publishing and publishing in general. I should also note that episode 74 is an episode that I remember so fondly and so dearly because it includes a detailed update about me proposing to my fiance Liz on May 6th, on my 50th birthday, and how actress and musician Alicia Witt helped me with that secret plan and secret proposal by performing a custom song that she wrote specifically for that occasion. And Liz, this is one plan I want to make. Let's go with the flow, with your hand in mine. All the rest of forever I just want to spend it together Whether rain or shine I love this life with you Well, that's just a teaser, or the chorus, uh, anyways, from the song that Alicia wrote for uh, Liz and I, and I proposed to Liz, Liz said yes, and so far she has not yet come to her senses and called off the wedding, but that was uh, still uh, one of my favorite songs, of course, for obvious reasons. But uh, again, that was uh, that was the last time I had Jay and Zach on the podcast, and there'll be more uh, with Jay and Zach later in this episode, but first, just going to share uh, a couple of updates. I have recently been in conversations with the good folks at Google Play, and uh, they are in the process of coordinating with me to have somebody on the Stark Reflections podcast so we can talk about what Google Play is doing for indie authors. But they also wanted to ask me to remind you that you can create a publisher account on Google Play Books. It's now easier than ever. It used to be that you would have to jump through hoops and do all kinds of magic tricks and, and all kinds of red tape, but now you can create a publisher account, and all you have to do is go to visit g.co slash play slash publish. There'll be a link to that in the show notes, but you can go there. You can create an account in just a few easy steps. 
and there's no longer an invite code or a waiting period for being approved or any of that stuff, Google Play Direct is uh, probably the best way to get into the Google Store. I, uh, the work I did with draft to digital we had had an account with Google Play, but it was a nightmare uh, for authors, basically, uh, to get your books into Google Play through draft to digital meant you had to go and request a code and then create your own direct account to Google Play, and then you would have to use draft to digital to do it. So the reality of the situation is if you have to create a direct account, you may as well just publish with that direct account. It's simple. It's straightforward. But in any case, if you're looking to expand your distribution, you can check out Google Play. And it now is easier than ever before. And I'm looking forward to chatting with somebody from Google so we can help authors sell more on more platforms. Because I'm all about that wide. Now, uh, speaking of wide, speaking of being on additional platforms, let's hear a word from this episode's sponsor, Find Away Voices. Did you know that you can kickstart your backlist using audiobook releases? Maybe you already have audio on ACX, or maybe you have plenty of backlist titles that have never been available in audio. Well, your content is new no matter if it's already been published. In the theater world, directors will often tell their actors the following. For many of today, tonight's audience, they're seeing the play for the first time. So give them your best. Likewise, even though your audiobook may have been published on another platform, or if the book has never been available in audio before, it's brand new to the audiences that you can reach in audiobook format, and you can reach them all through Findaway Voices. When you reach new audio platforms, you reach a brand new world of listeners who may discover you and your writing for the first time. Like any ebook you publish, royalties on audiobooks can be made any time of the day. While you're sleeping, someone halfway around the world is taking their lunch break and decides to log into their library app and check out your latest book. Why not ensure they can access your book in print, ebook, and audiobook? Now, if you want to learn more about how you can expand your catalog, your potential for passive income, and reach new readers from around the world via audiobooks, check out starkreflections.ca slash findaway. Now, before we get to the interview with Jay and Zach, I wanted to say that the giveaway of Taking the Short Tack, which was the book on short fiction that I co-wrote with Maddie Dalrymple, has been shipped to the two lucky winners announced in the last episode. So Chad and Amy, the books should have arrived or should be arriving by the time this episode goes to air on Friday the 13th. That's a lucky day for, for you if that book arrives then. Now, I'd like to ask you guys or any listeners who have read the book if you could take the time to leave an honest review on the preferred retail platform of your choice or on Goodreads. It all helps dramatically. Thanks so much for that. Now, speaking of giveaways, Jay and Zach are offering a special giveaway, and so am I, related to this interview. So stay tuned for the interview and the post-interview babble that I do to learn how you can win a print copy of the book and the accompanying workbook. There will be two winners randomly selected. So stay tuned for after this interview so you can hear your chance on how you can win. But that's enough introductory babble. Let's get right on to this conversation with Jay and Zach. Jay, Zach, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Great. Really looking forward to it. So I want to, I wanna, before we get into talking about I'm excited to talk to you guys about your latest release, The Three Story Method. I want to go back to something that you guys have been focusing on for a long time. Particularly, uh, I do listen to uh, avidly listen to your weekly podcast, Career Author Podcast. And in the last uh, few episodes leading up to one, the most recent one, uh, where, well, as of the recording of this, where you talked about three-story method, is you went into a whole bunch of different methodologies of craft. Could you guys give me a, a bit of a background on, 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 on what that whole transition uh, element was? Yeah. Should I take this one? Yeah, Zach? go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was just kind of an offhand thought, believe it or not. It wasn't something we had been working on for months, but 
uh, we had the launch of three story method on the horizon and, and Zach and I were talking about different ways that we could uh, sort of start to generate buzz on that. And in writing three story method, it's, I mean, it's, it's based on all these foundational methodologies that we all know and love. And I, and uh, I kind of had this thought like, I, but how many people really understand them or even know about them? Like, we all hear hero's journey, but do you know what it, do you know what it means? Like, do you know what it does? And, uh, and, and then you have ones like Virgin's promise. A lot of people have never even heard of it. And, and so because these were featured so prominently in three story method, we thought, well, why don't we take a few episodes? We'll call it like a special limited series. We'll take a break from our normal podcast format and we'll focus on one methodology per episode and we'll build up to three story method so that we are, we're going to give people all of the foundational methodologies that influenced us and we've used and we'll prepare them for, for that, for the uh, three story method by exposing them to these, these different types. And it's hard because, you know, you're only doing it in 30 or 40 minutes. So, you know, you can't exactly do the hero's journey justice in 40 minutes, but we wanted to at least give uh, writers some resources and some ideas of, of things that they could chase if they found it interesting. Well, what I found fascinating was there was always homework. It's like, oh, now I've got to go read Aristotle, or now I've got to <laughs> now, <laughs> now I've got to go. But but I like that is you're doing a Reader's Digest version for those who just want the the quick, but then those who want to dig into it, you're giving them opportunity to go and check it out in detail. Now and don't feel rushed because we've been reading all these books for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it all. Especially at once, Jay, because right? Jay did a lot of research and he'd hit me up like every day in Slack, like you gotta go read this book. You read this book. You know, I was like. <laughs> Dude, you overwhelmed me. <laughs> but it's a lot of good stuff, though. So yeah. Uh, so the genesis of this book it took it, it was quite a while in the making. Can you guys go back to the origin of actually how you determined that you wanted to do this book, and and did it change? Did it change formatting as you were developing it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we we're very systematic people. Like we we like having systems for things. Um, and, you know, having processes and stuff, it's just the way our brains work and stuff. So we had, we'd been developing three story method in this process over, you know, a, a publishing a, over a dozen books together and co-writing. And even like, even before that and during when we're working on stuff by ourselves and our process is constantly evolving, but what we realized is we had a process that really works and we would go to our event, you know, we do these small world building events and work with other authors and stuff. And, you know, Jay does a lot of coaching work in one-on-one -on -one and we would, we would introduce our process and we were realizing people were really getting a lot of benefit out of it. And they were really being like, wow, this is really simple to understand. It's awesome. And so we were sitting in a hotel room in new Orleans and I looked at Jay, I was like, dude, why don't we like write a book about this and like put our process down and, you know, uh, have our own methodology because it's really, really working for people who are coming to these events. Like people are really finding value in it. And from there, it was, it really snowballed. And uh, Jay specifically, you know, Jay, Jay really took the lead on this project and Jay worked in education for decades. And, uh, you know, so it, it really was a really good fit for him. And uh, he really started going down the rabbit hole and he was like, okay, well, I know what our process is, but why are we doing this? Like, what is the origin of all these things we were doing? And really did a lot of the research and, and, and put this whole thing together using his teaching background and stuff. And um, we really feel like that we have put together in a way that's very digestible. The biggest thing we hear is it's simple. There's a simple process to get your book from idea to draft. And, uh, and a lot of that goes into it. Just, you know, this book took, has taken us a year and a half and it's, which is longer than it takes. I mean, you know, and especially in the indie world, that is a lifetime, you know, but, uh, but we wanted this to be as, as best as it could. Um, and, uh, and it's really, and, and it's worked and this is, you know, now we have our process out there. It's helped us with our process, you know, even going through this, we've iterated, um, and we will continue to do that. But, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the gist of it. So the uh, three story method, um, uh, is that, um, meant to be a play on words? I was like, do you have to write three stories or is it more related to the building? Because you talked about foundation, et cetera. Can you give us a, a high level overview of what this three story method is? Jay, you want, you want, well, no, you came up with the title. I think. You uh, yeah, but I, maybe I'll let you talk. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the title, but then you can maybe talk about the power of three a little bit. Um, the, but basically like every, a lot of stuff in three, most everything in three story methods is based around three and, 
uh, you know, three is a magic number. You know, three is very, very <laughs> powerful. And um, as far as the title goes, you know, Jay came to me and I'm kind of the guy in our company that does a lot of the metadata and I do our cover. I don't do our covers, but I get them done. And I come up with our titles and stuff. And he's like, all right, you have to, we need to have something with three in the title. Like it needs to be, you know, try or three or whatever. And the word story. And I'm like, those are some pretty strict constrictions. <laughs> and um, I just started thinking about it. And it was like, well, three story method makes sense because like one of the big concepts in our book is the three C's, which is every, every level of your story should have a conflict, a choice and a consequence. So you have that on a scene level. So within a scene, you're kind of telling three stories. Um, you're telling three stories, but it's also kind of like three levels, like three stories like you'd have in a house or whatever. Um, on a act level, you're telling three stories because you have those things globally in there. And then on a story level, each act kind of acts as its own story that should obviously leave loops open, but you're also kind of tying things off and moving through your story. So that's basically what three story method means um, and, and, and how we came to that title. And uh, again, like the, the three is just a number that comes up a lot. So. Okay. And uh, one of the things I love uh, about this is it's, it's complete. Uh, you're selling the book to help writers. You're not trying to sell other uh, products. Now you have a workbook that is downloadable or you can buy, it's probably cheaper to, to buy the, the print version online. Uh, how does the workbook work with writers? Is that, is, is it, is it actually meant like, you know, cause before I, I haven't started reading it yet. So before I start reading it, maybe I, it makes sense for me to have a project in mind and go, pick up the workbook? Is that what you would recommend for writers? Yeah. You know, the idea with the workbook was, uh, again, sort of another, I, I think for me specifically, like being in education for so long, I just naturally thought like, well, you have a textbook, so you need a workbook. Like that's just, okay. <laughs> that's just how it's done, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I ran it past Zach and we had it professionally designed because we wanted it to be top notch. And the idea was like, when, when, when you get this book, that should be all you need. Like you said, we're not upselling to a course, an online course. We're not upselling. We're not doing a webinar series. We're not um, scaling this. Like the idea was you can read this book and that's all you need. Now, the workbook, uh, there's a link in, in the book where you can download and print out the workbook. It's exactly like the workbook we published. But if you were to take it to like Office Depot or Kinko's FedEx to print it out, it would cost you more than the $4.99 that we're selling it for on Amazon. <laughs> Okay. So we wanted to make a workbook that wasn't precious. We wanted okay. it to be so that people said, okay, for five bucks, I can put all of my planning in one bound thing and, and keep it all in one place. And when I'm ready to draft, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out the workbook and I'm ready to go. And every time I start a new project, I'll just get an, a, a new workbook. And so, like I said, we just didn't want to make it precious. You know, you can, it's, it's eight and a half by 11. It's white paper. It's lined. You can write in it, tear it up, rip it around. Um, and, and that was the whole idea is just give, give you the tools available for free. If you want the convenience and have the, have the nice bound workbook shipped to you for five bucks, then, um, then you can do that too. That's very cool. So uh, I guess what I'm thinking about is in terms of str strategies for authors. So Camp Nano uh, Rimo uh, starts in April, right? Where it's like this mini Nano Rimo, or you know, National Novel Writing Month in November. And, and again, I'm trying to give authors an opportunity lead time because this is the beginning of March when we're recording this. Is this the kind of book and workbook that if I'm planning on writing something for the month of April, or I'm planning on you know scheduling my writing time? I have an opportunity to use this book to help me develop all of my ideas, whether I'm a plants, a pantser or a plotter, I can still do it. I can still do it, uh, create all of my stuff. And then when I'm finished that, then I'm ready to write. Is that, is that how that's, it's meant to be used? That's exactly how it's meant to be used. One of the high level takeaways that we're trying to stress with people, and this came out of our own experience and in various different ways is storytelling doesn't have to be that complicated. Uh, as writers, we like to overcomplicate everything. We like to make it more complex than it has to be. And we're basically saying a kindergartner can tell you what a story is. It's a beginning and it's a middle and it's an end. Now, mastering that takes a lifetime. And, 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 and it's something we strive for every day. But the concept itself is not complicated. So if you, if you get the workbook or you print out the worksheet, or even if you just read the book, whether you uh, discovery write, whether you are a hardcore plotter, you will at least get the, the foundations of your story uh, on paper so you can start thinking about it. And then when, it, when time comes to drafting, you're not staring at a blank uh, white screen with a blinking cursor. 
Okay. Now, something that I think uh, I, I, from listening to your podcast and paying attention to what you guys are up to is, uh, I, I've been an advocate for you're always learning about the business of writing and publishing. But what I admire about you guys is you're doing that. But on top of it, you're always relearning the craft of writing. You're always focusing on how you can get better at the craft. Um, how, how important is that? Uh, I, I think it's a leading question because I think you guys <laughs> feel it's important. But, but I, I don't think we can emphasize that enough. How, how important is that to continue to refine your own ability at the craft of writing? Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's a scary thing to think to ever come to a point where you think you've learned enough. And, uh, you know, we do this as, you know, all three of us, we do this as a profession and we take it very seriously. And you can, you know, a lot of stuff, especially in the indie world, which all three of us are very entrenched in, like a lot of stuff revolves around like, well, how do I do ads? Like, how do I do this? Like, how do I get my book to sell more? How do I get in front of good people? But if you don't have a good book, none of that's going to matter. Like you might be able to sell a lot of really good copies or, or you might be able to sell a lot of your books because you have like really good ad copy or whatever, or, you know, you get a, you get a big ad placement or something like that. You get like a book bub or whatever, but if the book's not good, that's not going to be a lot. Like people aren't going to come back and read you again, which is what we all want to be able to sustain this and do this forever. And that all comes back to craft. And, and again, I think like you, you need to constantly be getting better. You need to be reading fiction books, like reading books on the craft. You know, I, I could tell you like, the last year and a half, like going through this and really diving deep into why we're doing this stuff with three story method and reading all these different books. Like Jay and I are way better writers than we were when we started this. Pro I mean, writing this book was just as beneficial for us as it's going to, as we hope it will be for people who read it. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think you just have to constantly keep learning. I already have Zach rolls his eyes every time I do this. I already have four titles in the hopper for, for the second edition of three story method. <laughs> Like books I found afterwards and I'm like, well, I can't put that in now. But, and, and Zach's like, dude, the book has to be done. You got to finish it. Cause I would, <laughs> I'd find these books and like, Oh, got to, got to get that in there. So now I've got, you know, uh, I'm settling on a second edition, but I'm stacking, you know, so even, you know, with three story method, uh, it's not the end. It's not the definitive method for storytelling or, or craft. And, and even the guys who wrote that are still looking to like, Oh, we can improve it. We can, we're going to learn more as we go along. And I think, that's just a very positive attitude you can have, whether you're a writer or a carpenter or, or whatever. Okay, excellent, excellent. I, I want to come back to, because I love the fact that you're constantly learning and constantly sharing the things that you're learning. Because thanks to you guys, my reading list has exploded. Like all of these <laughs> things. Now I got to read this. Now I got to do that. So I, I, I both hate you and love you for that. <laughs> but how has, so uh, your podcast started, I think the same week mine did, uh, the first week of January, 2008. Yes. Right? So we're, yep. we're kind of like, you know, <laughs> cousins we're like or something. like podcast twins or something. <laughs> twins, right? yeah, whatever you call it, yeah. <laughs> How has, uh, because you've, you've evolved and modified the podcast and changed the format a couple times along the way, how has the podcast actually helped you in your own writing craft? Hmm. You want to take that one, Jay? Start there? I don't, yeah, it's an interesting question. I don't know if it helped so much in craft as it has more in relationship building. I think okay. that's where it's it's made a tremendous difference. I mean, Yes, we, we have to bring our A game. If we're, uh, I mean, we're, we're by no means a multimedia, you know, empire, but we, we have thousands of people who listen to us on a weekly basis. And, and so we have to bring our A game and, and, and we have to, to do our best and, and we have to be transparent and we have to share what, what we learn. And I think a byproduct of all of that, and, and I'm sure, you know, given your situation, Mark, you see this as well, is that you start to build a community and you start to connect with people in ways that are much more meaningful than, than a, a simple email. And, uh, you know, we go to an event or we host an event and people feel like they already know us because we're in their ear every week, have, have been for years. And, um, and it's fantastic. And we get some of the same people coming to all of our events. And, uh, and we take a lot of pride in that because we know that uh, it's a sacrifice that people make. Um, they, ha they have a lot of options. And so to keep coming back to us is, is a real sense of pride. And we, and we take that very seriously. It's a, it's a great responsibility. So I think for me, the podcasting is really about the relationship building, the, the community, and, and just fostering a sense that like, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, we're not competing with each other. We're competing with 
Netflix and Hulu and Sony Switch and all the other distractions of, or forms of entertainment that people have that aren't reading. Yeah, I think for me, I mean, I, I'll, I'll kind of take it another route too. I mean, um, you know, the, the conversations that Jay and I have, I mean, we obviously talk a lot about publishing and we talk a lot about writing and craft and stuff, but do, seeing that and doing the podcast every week does kind of force us to, you know, plan out our episodes and stuff. And it has sparked some conversations and made me think about things I haven't thought of, you know, or maybe we ha- we wouldn't have talked about otherwise. So, and I could go with craft. Like there's definitely craft things we've talked about on the show that for whatever reason in our millions of conversations we've had never came up. And I'm like, and, and I can't think of one specifically, but I know it has come up where I'm like, oh, wow, like we've never talked about that, but that totally makes sense. And so um, having that conversation every single week and, and sitting down, you know, with two of us talking about this stuff too, does not, not just with craft, but just with everything. Like it does definitely, it definitely benefits me, you know, in a lot of the same ways I'm sure it's benefiting listeners as well. So, okay. Now, speaking of community, one of the things that you guys have been championing uh, is uh, is that in person connection, and the difference between yes, it's amazing. Uh, you know, Zach, uh, you and I were chatting before uh, the recording started, and I said, "Feels like even though I hadn't seen you in person since May last year, yeah. it feels like I've been talking to you every week because you're in yeah, my absolutely. ear, you know, yeah. every Thursday." But um, and Jay's in my ear a hell of a lot more because he's on like <laughs> 50 different podcasts. But <laughs> I, I think uh, those in-person events you do and, and the, what I love about it is you're focusing on very uh, tight knit, smaller, intimate groups rather than an explosive everyone in the world is here. Um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about the value of that intimate in-person connection, even though we do believe in a digital world, uh, that value of those in-person events that you guys are, are, are taking control and mastering. Yeah, I think for me, um, you just can't replicate being in a room with other people, like whether in any instance, and, you know, especially when you're around people who are other creatives and they're passionate about the same thing you are. And, you know, you know, Facebook groups are great. Slack groups are great. But, you know, especially when you look at, you know, Facebook author groups and stuff, you, you know, you have all these other distractions going on. You can easily click away and do this stuff. But when you're in a group room with people, especially with our world building events, we're like working towards a common goal. Like you're present, you're there in the moment. You're not, there's no other things, distractions going on. And, you know, we get so much out of those, even for us, like, you know, all the, we've learned so much from our attendees and, uh, you know, every single time we do them, it just seems better. And it's just, you just can't replicate doing that stuff online. And what we found even more is that when you're able to do the smaller events, you know, our world building events are usually 10 to 15 people, uh, you know, and, and then our, the career author summit is 120, 125. You really, at, at a group that size, you really get to know everybody. You get speakers, get to answer more questions and talk to more people. It's just more accessible for people to be able to communicate and network and be present. Um, and, and so we've really taken a stand and really love doing these smaller events. Oh, Jay, I can let you add. Something well, here. yeah, I mean, Mark, you were, uh, you were a happy attendee at our, at our rock Epoch event that we held at the rock and roll hall of fame in Cleveland. Uh, what was your experience in that room? So it was phenomenal because I mean, I've only ever collaborated with one other person at a time rather than a room. Uh, when we were, uh, sitting around a table, all facing each other in, in, in a really awesome space, right? The rock and roll hall of fame, which is kind of cool in and of itself. Um, <laughs> It was just, I, I, I had to stop myself from um, stepping back and just watching with amazement all of the, all of the things that people were pitching and tossing in. And then and I had to remind myself, I, I, should, I should participate too, just because I was, <laughs> like, that was the combination. It was just such an amazing experience to watch and go, wow, look at this going. Like, we built something completely out of nothing, right, on the spot, uh, which is kind of a really, really cool experience. And then I still feel connected to those people that were in that room because you know we did get a chance to um, to do that now you guys are doing you're doing uh, obviously the career author summit sold out it's coming in in may of uh, 2020 but you're doing a number of other uh, uh events that are, are geared towards intimate collaboration uh are there still tickets available for some of them can you talk about what those yeah. are be? 
Unfortunately not. Uh, we have Vampires of New Orleans. Uh, we're going to be doing a world building weekend in New Orleans over Halloween, which is going to be a blast. Unfortunately, that's sold out. Right. Uh, we do have several events uh, in, in the plans for 2021 that we uh, will be announcing at the, at the Career Author Summit in May. Okay. And one, one sort of thing that we just started talking about um, that's along these lines is, uh, again, we wrote Three Story Method as a standalone book, and that's all you need. Um, but we, uh, and, and Zach and I sat down, and we were talking about, okay, what else are we going to do with this? And we started talking about an online course. Like, we were, we were going to book time in Cincinnati and, and rent cameras and, like, and, and we decided not to do that. And uh, we're doubling down on, on this intimate, in-person, real-life gathering. And so what we're doing is we're, we're, uh, we're putting some feelers out there. In the back of the three-story method, there's a link. And you can click on it and tell us if you would be interested in uh, arriving to a, a, a workshop on, a, on like a Friday night or Saturday morning with, with no, nothing or maybe an idea or a concept or a premise and then working with us and, and a small group of, you know, 12, 15 uh, people. And then leaving Sunday with a plan, a, a three-story method workbook filled out, and you could start drafting on Monday morning. Um, and so we're probably going to pilot that if there's enough interest and, um, and see how that goes. And that would be, again, one of these very small, intimate, real-world uh, weekend events. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. Um, uh, so you have to uh, pick up the book and check the link to the, the back of it so you can check it out if you're interested. Um, uh, I am, am going to be offering a really cool opportunity for listeners to win uh, a copy of the book nice. and the workbook. Cool. Yes, because, you know, my patrons are awesome, so they're supporting us. They're sponsoring <laughs> that, that giveaway. Um, but I wanted to talk about the fact that, you, so you guys are, uh, one of you's in Cleveland, the other one's in Nashville. Uh, you're, you're, you're quite a distance apart from one another. You're connected, uh, like through Slack. You guys are talking probably multiple times a day. You're at least video chatting at least one time for the recording and probably another time for business and maybe another time for creative. I'm guessing three times a week minimum you're talking to each other video. Yeah, wise. give or take. Yeah, something like that. And yet you still take the time to uh, sometimes you meet halfway. Sometimes yeah. one of you goes to hang out at the other person's house. <laughs> spend a few days uh again uh you're you're very digital in your approach why 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 are you investing so much time and energy in in that in person connection when you're already so well connected with one another yeah so it goes back to what i was kind of saying earlier there conversations and things happen when we're sitting down like in a coffee shop and uh, a common place we meet is cincinnati ohio because it's about halfway between nashville and cleveland um, and we'll go and like rent an Airbnb for a couple of days. And the conversations happen when we're sitting in a coffee shop uh, or across from each other, or we're sitting down in a couch in the Airbnb watching episodes of The Office. Like I, stuff happens, that uh, conversations happen that would just won't happen if we're on a Zoom call. And we have like this set amount of time and we're, it, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's just a different, it's just a totally different experience and we've found the value in it. So we talk about, pre, we talk about pretty low level stuff digitally. I mean, obviously stuff will come up that we have to talk about immediately, but any big story meetings or any time we have like a big, we have an idea for an event that we want, that we really need to go in, you know, um, whether it's authors on a train or uh, one of our world building events or the summit, like we have big conversations. We hold those until we can do an in-person meeting, which typically we try to do once a quarter. Um, sometimes we have to meet halfway. We we're doing enough events where a lot of times that suffices where we, uh, we will try to get some time to do stuff. Uh, as you said, sometimes I'll go up there. Sometimes he comes down here. It just kind of depends. But we really try to save those big conversations because every time it happens, we say, wow, there's no way we would have come to this conclusion, whether it's a plot line in a story or like something with an event. We never would have come to that if we were just doing this on Zoom or we were brainstorming on our own and then coming back later and meeting. Like it's just totally different being in the same room and just going back and forth. Let's go back to the three-story method because I want to um, impress upon listeners the, the value of the basics of the craft and making sure uh, the fundamentals of the story. Um, I want you guys to share, uh, I'm going to give it a bit of a heads up here. I want you guys to share where people can find out more about it. But prior to that, 
Um, um, is it okay for me to ask if we if we have a Jay's Ways or Zach's Hacks that you guys are willing to share <laughs> on the spot if I put you on the spot right here? Because, you know, I haven't heard one in several weeks on your podcast. I'm wondering if you <laughs> satisfy that here. That's all uh, you, Jay. Put all you right. So are, in, in regards to three-story method or just a, a way or a hack in general? In general, I could be a little with... bit more open. Yeah, a little bit more open in general. Oh, man, that is a tough one. Yeah, I yeah, uh, put you on the spot. Put me on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't keep I can't come up with that on the spot. It's okay. I figured I figured I should have given you guys a heads up on that, but I was like, oh, I could just throw it out there and see what happens. <laughs> if you are near a Panera bread, you can get a monthly oh, subscription go. for eight ninety nine where you get unlimited coffee and tea. This is actually gonna be a hack on an upcoming episode of career author because I love this. Oh my god. So if you're someone awesome. like me who writes outside the house a lot. And I try to support local coffee shops because there's great ones in Nashville. Yeah. But uh, I also live right near Panera and they have really good coffee. And so eight, nine on a month, you can go. And if you're staying at the cafe, you get unlimited refills. Uh, really? And yeah, or you can get like one cup every two hours or something like that. Oh, that's Hot fantastic coffee, for writers. iced coffee or tea. So there's a hack for you. So if you're there a writer, you <laughs> yeah, nine bucks a month will get you unlimited coffee at Panera and you oh. can go use their Wi-Fi. I love that. I love that. Appreciate that. Go. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. th throwing one out there on the spot. Yeah, well done, it's, Zach. It's, <laughs> it's probably twenty two ninety nine a month in Canada. <laughs> it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, where can people find out more about you guys, as well as some of the events you do and uh, Three Story Method? Yeah, I mean, uh, the the best place to go would be the careerauthor dot com, and you can get to everything from there: the podcast, the events, and if you um, if you want to get Three Story Method, just go to three story method dot com and and links to uh, it's it's there for everywhere we we are really proud that we this is the first big book we launched wide so it's available in all formats in all marketplaces all across the world and uh got it on my kobo got it on your kobo <laughs> so there you go <laughs> awesome well gentlemen thanks so much for taking the time to uh chat with me virtually i'm looking forward to seeing you both in person in may and in, in nashville likewise thanks yeah thank thanks you so much for having us on mark we definitely appreciate it there's something I wanted to reflect on that Jay and Zach have always impressed me with, and it is their long-term, lifelong dedication to learning about the business of writing and publishing and about the craft. It doesn't matter how many books they've published. It doesn't matter how long they've been at it. They're continually working at the reading resources and focusing on how they can improve their craft. It's no surprise to any long-term listener of this podcast that I'm a huge fan of Neil Peart, the drummer and lyricist for Rush. One of the things that impressed me significantly about Neil was that even though he had already won every major award and, and, and all these kudos for being one of the world's best drummers or best drummers ever, later on in life, after winning all these kudos, after 30 albums, he went back and retrained himself on how to play the drums because he thought he could do better. He thought he could apply himself more. He thought there was more he could learn. And we can take a lesson from Neil Peart, from Jay, and from Zach on exactly that. There's always something we can learn as writers about the business of writing and about the craft of writing. I'm really excited to get working with this workbook. I plan on using it for both a short fiction that I'm working on as well as longer projects. And I'm eager to also share that with you, the listener. Now, Jay and Zach agreed to comp a copy, a print copy of the book, as well as the workbook to a random person who leaves a comment on this episode. This is episode 123 of the Stark Reflections podcast over at starkreflections.ca. Now, all you have to do for your random chance to win is leave a comment on episode 123 with a way or a hack for writing. It can be about the business of writing. It can be about the craft of writing. What is a way or a hack? And this is in honor of Jay's ways and Zach's hacks, which I love from their career author podcast. But leave either a way or a hack that you have recently learned and would want to share with other listeners to this podcast. I will read those ways and hacks in future episodes of the podcast. And if you leave your comment by the end of day on March 31st, 2020, I'm going to do a random drawing and I'm going to let Jay and Zach know who won 
and they will ship a copy of the print book as well as a print copy of the workbook to you. Now, for all patrons of the show, just for being a patron, you're going to automatically get included in a chance to win one from me, and that's courtesy of you awesome patrons to this show. And so the way it works is if if you are a $1 a month patron, you'll be entered once. If you are a $3 a month patron, you'll be entered two times. And if you're a $5 a month patron, you'll be entered three times. So just for being a patron of the show, thank you guys so much. You'll be randomly selected. Now, if you're a patron who happens to leave a comment, well, then you get that extra chance to win. And so again, you have until the end of day, Eastern time, March 31st, 2020, for a chance to win this fantastic new book and workbook from Jay and Zach. Again, This is Mark Leslie Lefebvre from the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. This has been episode 123. Stay tuned for next week's episode where I'll be interviewing Lindsay Flanagan. Now, Lindsay is an editor I was fortunate enough to work with when I had a story reprinted in the Cursed Collectibles Anthology. And we talked to her about freelance editing, we talked to her about working with an editor, and we talked to her about Eschler Editing, which is the main company that she does freelance writing for. That's next week in episode 124, which will be coming out on Friday, March 20th. But this episode, the Friday, March 13th, 2020 episode, was episode 123. So until next episode and next week, this is Mark Leslie Lefebvre wishing you Great writing and good stark reflections. Thank you for listening to the Stark Reflections podcast. You can find show notes for each episode at starkreflections.ca. The music for this podcast, Laser Groove, was composed and produced by Kevin McLeod. Check out more of Kevin's great music at incomtech.com.